um, Mr. Falvey, you're going to get this question um, regarding ultimately should this issue of artificial turf go into the capital budget and as a referendum question. And in order to do that, to respond to that, the citizens are asking what are the total costs to install, what are the annual maintenance costs of the turf, what is the life expectancy of the turf as compared to the current costs for the existing field and its upkeep. Was that a statement or a question? That was a question about all of those particular dollar amounts okay. and um, then ultimately does it go to referendum? Certainly. Uh, well, ultimately, if, if it's going to come to pass, it is going to have to come to referendum. However, uh, the questions that are being asked by the public as the way the, the, the question was posed are exactly the questions I've been asking. And I had a conversation with a sitting council person just the other night about this. And I was asked, where do I stand on the area of the turf? And I told them flat out, like I've been telling everybody else, I'm in favor of the turf. But we need to know what's it going to cost right now to the town to install it. We're going to get a grant. Money has to be raised somewhere else. Is there going to be any tax dollars to install it? need to know that absolutely first. Then we absolutely need to know what's it going to cost to maintain an artificial turf field in comparison to what it costs to maintain the grass field that we have in place now. What's the ultimate long-term cost to maintain that field is the second part. Thirdly, and actually most importantly, what's it going to cost to replace? These things have a definite lifespan. And while um, we're still waiting for the turf subcommittee to present, excuse me, present its findings, I'm sure they will tell us what the anticipated lifespan of that turf is. And then we can say, okay, what do we do 8, 10, 12, whatever years from now when this thing wears out? Where's the money going to come from to replace it? Because you can't just leave it there. You can't just put grass seed on top of artificial turf and hope that it, it, it lasts. So I've been saying all along, turf's a great idea as long as we know up front what's it going to cost. And that goes to any capital item that goes up for referendum. We can't just say it's a good thing, let's do it. We need to know the long-term costs, including what's it going to cost to replace in the future. Anyone else? Mr. Caprio. I would respectfully agree um, with, with um, with my opponent, I guess. Um, I agree wholeheartedly, and I think that that is why at our last council meeting, um, I voted against reallocating that money from the grant um, toward anything else. And the reason being that we have set up a subcommittee of volunteers that we asked to look into a wider range of things, from health concerns to costs, you know, cost to maintain, cost to put in, cost to replace. And we need to allow this committee the chance to come and present its findings to this council. Only then, when we have that information, when we are able to look at all the facts that they've gathered, can we make the correct, the right decision for the community in regards to the turf? Okay. Yes, Mr. Talbot. Absolutely what uh, Councilwoman DiCaprio said. The, the turf committee was established to look into this issue. The town was given a grant from the state of Connecticut of $525,000 expressly for the purpose of putting in a turf field at the high school. The committee has not yet reported back. They need to be heard from, and we need to have the correct answers before we can proceed forward. But look at the use that would be on that field and the use of the field as it stands today. You're talking about soccer for both youth and high school, boys and girls, football, lacrosse, field hockey, and it just keeps continuing. I was uh, very close to Falcon Field being installed over in Meriden and was privy to a lot of the negotiations that went on having that field installed over there, which is a first-class facility. We could have that same kind of first-class facility here and we could do it the right way where it wouldn't dig into taxpayers' dollars. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Rocco? Yeah, I, uh, I, think, I think there's other priorities besides turf, but I think there's a process to this, and the process is really simple, and that's put it in the budget. Put it in the capital budget. Every other project of that magnitude uh, would be a capital budget item, and I, I don't think the turf 
should be an exception. I think it's a question of transparency. I think people need to know what their share uh, of the cost is going to be, and that's the way I think it should proceed. All of those questions that were asked, that the, the moderator asked, none of them have been answered. Um, earlier tonight, um, the, my distinguished colleague, Mr. Ecke, talked about the planning process uh, and how things are planned before we ask for grants. This, this grant was never requested formally from the council, and there was never a plan on the table when that grant was requested. No. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. Thank you. Mr. Bowman. Actually, it was requested not by this council, but a, by a previous council, and there was a, a grant done eight, for $850,000, which died with a veto by the governor years ago. Uh, you cannot have 135 plus events on a field and not expect it to deteriorate. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, we are, our children are growing and we have a lot of children and a lot of youth services and a lot of uh, sports and uh, they need a, a facility that's not dangerous. Okay. Next question comes from Mr. Morgan, the Herald. Thank you. Ms. DiCaprio. What do you believe is the most